Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. Well, this video is just here to thank all the subscribers and all the Vespistas that have been huge enthusiasts of our Vespa YouTube channel. I started this over 10 years ago. I would have never, ever imagined that it would have had the following that it does. It's like the number one Vespa channel. I just, I, I'm kind of taken back by it. I never tried to do this. I just like working on scooters. I like Vespas. I like scooters, two wheelers in general. So sometimes I veer off the Vespas a little bit. And I just like sharing my knowledge with everybody. And I just want to give everybody a thank you for you know, all the amazing support. And I know I've helped tons of people service their Vespas, make decisions on buying Vespas. I've changed people's lives. They end up owning a Vespa shop. Um, it's pretty neat. I just, I don't know, I'm kind of taken back by it. We've hit 100,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, over 26 million views of our videos. It's pretty incredible. So starting late February 2022, we got some promos that we're going to include with orders at scooterwest.com. So first of all, we're making it a limited number of a cup cozy, you know, beer cozy if you just want to get to the point. Hope you don't drink and drive, but you know, you always want to keep your drink cool. And we're coming on spring and summer's right around the corner. Always fun to have a good cup cozy. And it's going to be a special edition, 500 are going to be made for the thousand subscribers. Uh, the next item that we're gonna be giving away is just a sticker that we came up with. There's gonna be a thousand of this limited run sticker. So look for those in your orders. And we send out quite a few orders, especially with spring coming around, hundreds of orders a day. So the cup cozies and stickers are gonna go fast. Um, later, probably in summer, we'll have some other commemorative items on our website that you'll be able to purchase if you wanna celebrate the occasion with me. All right, thanks everybody. I can thank you for the support and it goes both ways. I sure hope I've helped you, influenced you in your decisions to buy a Vespa or repair them. And I'm just tickled that you watch my videos. I never tried to do this. I just like doing it. Um, let's get a little off subject. I'm just sitting next to a little display I made today and I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about it. So I just want to give everybody a little history lesson on where Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West came from. So the roots all started when Vespa of America pulled out of the North American market. Now sometime in 81, 82, they were done with the American market. They had some product liability lawsuits with the vintage shifty scooters. I won't go into that. Maybe that's a story for another day. But shortly after in 1983, we have Fabio Balleron that had connections with Europe. He speaks both Italian and French. Uh, he still works for us. He's the delivery driver for the Vespas here in San Diego, helps us with lots of other stuff. His son, Fabio III, works in the parts and shipping department. But that all started in 1983. He started in a little shop off uh, Fairmont Avenue here in San Diego, California. Um, just importing small volumes of vintage Vespa repair parts to keep vintage Vespas, or at that time they were still pretty new if it was a 81 P200, keeping them on the road when the dealer network is completely fallen apart by 83. So he ran Vespa Super Shop. Later down the road, he came out with a catalog and was doing some mail order parts. It was very rudimentary in the early days. Alex came around, um, right around 92, he started his own shop and it was off Adams Avenue. It's Alex Cohen. He is the founder and started Vespa Motorsport. And that's the original name of our business was Vespa Motorsport. And he did a lot of local scooter part sales here in, in San Diego. And at the t for a moment, it was along with Fabio. Fabio was on University, 2525 University Avenue in the North Park area of San Diego. And 
Alex joined forces with Fabio in 1993, moving to that location. So Alex took over the retail operations while Fabio was still running the mail order catalog and selling parts. And the way that shop worked, it had a little downstairs area. There was a parts counter and accessories on the wall, all for vintage scooters. Modern Vespas didn't exist in the 90s. And in the back, there was Darren. I remember Darren, that was a little bit later. There's some other technicians that worked there. Um, but there was a service center in the back and upstairs was a warehouse area. So back to the subject of this motor, a few years prior, somewhere around 86, 87, Fabio had an extra P125X motor just sitting around. Ironically, it's got this Panasco flywheel on it. He did this cutaway, so he probably took a chop saw. I never asked some details of how he made this engine, but it's a cutaway motor. If you go into the uh, Piaggio Museum in Pontedera, they have something similar. It's built a little bit to a level, uh, a tiny bit higher than this, but nonetheless pretty cool. You can see the inner workings. It even moves the crankshaft and such. You can see the stator plate. And on the back side of the motor, you can even see the gearbox is cut away. But I put it in this little nook just today, actually. Um, the story with this motor is Fabio made that. He put it into San Diego, or pretty much, I don't know if you say donated or had it on display at the San Diego Automotive Museum. And I remember distinctly seeing this in my early days of scootering. Right when I got there, oh wow, there's a cutaway P125 motor in a display in the museum. Well, this motor was in that museum for over 20 years, probably more like 25 or closer to 30 years, just sat in that museum. And the museum restructured and it was lost. Uh, we just recently got it back from the museum and I thought, well, how ironic, kind of the history of uh, Vespa Motorsports, Scooter West, and the Vespa Super Shop are kind of all tied to this cutaway motor that was made in the mid 80s. So right in the service department, I put it right on the shelf and that was a cool little disp display case. So back to the history of Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So, um, so Vespa Super Shop was operating, had a mail order catalog, I'll probably put a little uh, picture of what that catalog looked like, one of the early catalogs that we had. It was all print, it was all by phone, maybe fax, you know, in the 90s. The internet was just starting to come along. I think there was a, a bulletin board by the mid-90s called Two Stroke Smoke. Um, and that was about it, you know, for online presence. I mean, now the landscape has drastically changed on how you order parts and products, but that's the way it went. So moving along into the late 90s, uh, Darren was out of the repair shop. I think there was uh, Kerry, he was working on Vespas. I was into Vespas. I had my first P200 by the, um, the mid 90s. And I had my first modern Vespa in 1996. And you can look at one of my past videos. I've reviewed the European model Vespa ET4 got a gray market one here in the States. And I was pretty young at the time, somehow scrounged up enough money to bring one over in pieces and put it back together. Um, wish I still had that original one, but it was a kind of an interesting time. And that's how I got my uh, feet into modern Vespas. I was already into the vintage Vespas. I had a Vespa GL that I still have actually, and a P200 in the mid nineties. Uh, moving on to the 2000s, Alex started expanding. He took over the operations of Vespa Super Shop completely. So he was running both the mail orders, started with a small web store. I was the nerd that helped him uh, write some of the HTML for the original web store. Um, it's more or less just a catalog that was online. And Vespa still wasn't officially in the United States. So moving along to 2001. Uh, Vespa comes back to the United States and they had this plan to open boutique stores, you know, and many of the, the classic Vespa shops throughout the United States. I'm talking Scooter Works and that's still around with us. Uh, there were several other scooter shops, Randolph's uh, Classic Scooters, you know, um, lots of other small scooter shops. They were not included with this boutique 
uh, program that Vespa and Piaggio uh, planned to uh, set up in 2001 to bring the original Vespa ET4 and ET2 along with a, a Liberty 50 and Liberty 150, LT 150 into the United States. Um, they wanted people with more capital and nicer buildings at the time. So what did that mean for Vespa Motorsport? That was a retail operation of our shop. At the time we were selling Derby scooters, Idle Jets, Kimco um, out of a small showroom. Uh, Vespa asked us to get rid of the Vespa in our shop name. So we were from 2001 all the way up till 2010, we called the retail shop Motorsport Scooters and it had the racer the racer gs dude that we still have in our logo but we just made a rectangular logo called motorsport scooters well alex and steve at the time decided it was time to expand to about a 4,000 square foot building in north park on 30th street in 2003 because we want to have a larger showroom for the kimcos that were selling very good at the time and we wanted to expand the mail order operations. Of, and during that time, somewhere in there, we also added the name scooterwest.com. A uh, nice, easy, catchy name for a web store. So 2003, moved to, what was it? 4225 30th Street, if I recall, in North Park. And this is when I first became involved with this shop. I worked full time for a product design and engineering firm. They did mechanical engineering of uh, mundane medical equipment. Uh, kind of, I worked in CAD software and uh, illustration software, um, just real nerdy stuff. Uh, but on the side, I was always wrenching on scooters. Well, Carrie did not come along to the new repair department of Motorsport Scooters on 30th Street. And I thought, well, I could probably, um, you know, wrench on the side here and moonlight along with a full-time job. Oh boy, was I in for a surprise. It was a lot of work. There was several nights where I just worked right to 2, 2 a.m. And that's where my nickname Robot came from. I had friends coming over, uh, other scooterists. They want to come out and chit chat and hang out at shop after we closed up at 6 p.m. And I looked at the sea of scooters that need to be repaired. Um, and Steve just always said, ah, you're so methodical, you don't talk to anybody, you just continue to work without speaking to anybody and you stay on task. So he just started to call me a robot. And at first I kind of did not like the, the nickname, but then I just finally embraced it. So. Right around 2009, I would say, 2010, um, I started getting pretty heavy on the videos and just used the alias robot. Um, and by that time, the boutiques were falling apart. The fellow who owned three different Vespa shops here in the San Diego region uh, went bankrupt. And by late 2009, we were going to take on the Vespa and Piaggio line. And Piaggio asked us to move to a larger location and do a, a proper build out for a showroom at the time. Around 2010, we started uh, coming up with plans and looking for a building. And when Alex and Steve at the time, Monica, they purchased the building that we're currently in. It's nearly 12,000 square feet and it's still too small for us now. Uh, mostly warehouse space for the mail order operation, but we have a lovely showroom that was built out and I have my lovely service department that was built out along in 2011. And I was heavily involved with the, the construction. I like that is like kind of side work. I've done some pretty substantial remodels on my own personal house. And uh, it's just fun to learn new things, figure out the best way to do stuff. It kind of all carries over to working on scooters and even my past with some engineering background. Um, just something I've always loved. So I helped with the build out of the service department and we pretty much officially opened in 2011 with our Vespa showroom and the service department. And we just ramped up the YouTube channel little by little. 
Um, I still didn't think much of YouTube back in um, 2011 when you had an iPhone 4. You could watch YouTubes on it, but um, just kind of ramped it up. And we pretty much have been expanding ever since. Our mail order operation is rather vast and our showroom stays number fairly busy and we always stay in the top 10 dealers in the United States for Vespas. So that's kind of the history in a nutshell for Vespa Motorsport, ScooterWest.com, Motorsport Scooters, and the Vespa Super Shop here in San Diego, California. I uh, hope it wasn't too confusing switching around, but let me show you some other fun things that we have here. So along with the, the vintage 1978 motor, I have a cutaway Vespa Electrica motor. Well, not necessarily a cutaway, I just have it partly disassembled. The problem with the electric motor is so few moving parts, you can't really see what's going in there. It's just a gearbox, a stator, which is windings of wire, it would look much cooler if you didn't have the tape wrapped on it, and a rotor that has permanent magnets in it, and several sensors that are built into it, and a gearbox. Um, it's actually already becoming to be an older design for an electric scooter drivetrain. Almost all new scooter, electric scooters that are coming out are going with the even simpler hub motor. There's no gearbox at all. And everybody knows at some point the future is electric. Um, kind of ironic that it's so much simpler than the complicated motors from the 50s, 60s, and 70s in a Vespa that had a manual transmission. This electric motor probably has, I would say about a third as many parts, or maybe a quarter as many parts as a vintage Vespa motor. So again, I want to shoot for the moon, maybe a million subscribers at some time. I'm still motivated to do videos as much as ever. I wish I had more time. I wish I didn't have to even run this shop. I can just do videos all day. I think I could come up with content. I can go week long rides and made wonderful documentaries. Uh, but reality strikes. I got a shop to manage. Hmm. I love doing that too as well. So thanks to everybody. I love all the comments. I wish I had time to respond to them. There's just so many of them. I, I'm busy the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hours I got to work every day. Um, I'm glad other subscribers go in there and comment as well. Sometimes we try to comment when we do have time. Um, thanks for all the support. And if you're ever in San Diego, feel free to stop on by. Uh, help support this channel. I don't do much in monetizing this channel. Purchase products from ScooterWest.com and support your local dealership, whether it's us in San Diego, or if you're looking to buy a Vespa, buy it from your local dealership, wherever it is in the world or in the United States. And we definitely got you covered when it comes time to buy parts and accessories for your Vespa at ScooterWest.com. So, honk to the 100,000 view uh, subscribers and shoot for the moon for the next quarter million and maybe a million sometime. See you on the next one. Robot here.